TF2, as an esport, is a community grassroots project. It was built up without Valve endorsing it, and it sustained itself without Valve endorsing it. But now that we've gotten to a point where Community Sixes has figured out its own rules and regulations, we're left with one question. Why hasn't Valve endorsed it yet? Now, don't get me wrong. Valve does announce high-level tournaments, and as of recent, added an official Sixes format to the game. But we still don't really see promotion on the same level Dota or CSGO get. They don't contribute to prize pools, they don't host their own tournaments. Pretty much all we get right now is a glorified lawn sign. And although it's been debated for a while, it's become pretty clear as of recent why Valve avoids endorsing it. They don't like the meta right now. It's important to note that other Valve esports don't have a rift between their casual and competitive communities. The casual and competitive versions of Dota 2 are virtually identical. And although CSGO varies, it's most well known for its competitive, which is the same at all levels. A player who's day one to those games will be playing the exact same version of the game that players at the top of competitive are playing. In TF2 though, the casual way to play the game is 12v12, and the ranked way is a version of 6s with no rule sets in place. This gets even further removed from popular competitive TF2 leagues like ESEA or UGC, where whitelists are in place keeping unbalanced and potentially bugged weapons out of selection. Firstly, to fill in anybody that's not familiar, in extremely simplified terms, the current Sixes meta is Double Scout, Double Soldier, Demo, and Medic. Without going into too much detail, majority of the other classes are considered specialists because they're more suited for long defenses or single target elimination. Although if you get rid of weapon bans, some classes potentially turn into really good generalists, but they kind of slow down the game because they're really annoying and basically the community just keeps them as specialists. When unlocks are allowed, the line between generalists and specialists becomes blurred. Classes that are built to be defensive powerhouses are now mobile enough to bring that defense forward, making the pushback even slower. A big problem we run into when trying to balance for competitive is trying to mess with generalists and specialists. If you try to change specialists into being more versatile, you're diluting exactly what makes these characters unique and interesting. If we make the Pyro more mobile with higher burst damage, he would just be intruding on the type of attack role the scout was created for. 9 sounds like a big number of classes, but they all have very different roles. From the game's original inception, it's clear that this philosophy was always their intention. The Demo Man is the most versatile combat class, capable of rapidly switching from strong offensive pushes to defensive area denial, and his sticky bombs give him a grenade jumping ability similar to that of the soldier's rocket jumps. His sticky bombs can also prevent enemies from moving through doorways, cover a retreat, and defend control points even when the Demo Man is somewhere else. The Soldier is a core combat class featuring versatile movement and a terrific long-range damage capability. He's designed to be comfortable in almost any combat situation and to be the best long-range anti-sentry gun class. His main weaknesses are designed into his primary weapon, the rocket launcher. The, the trickiness around cost balancing in, in class games is much more around um, generalists. Like the, the challenge you have is finding the right balance between general applicability and specialist. So like the soldier and the demo are just very generally applicable classes, and so they're, they're a, pain to, a pain to balance relative to the specialist classes. I think our class roles are still distinct enough. Um, you know, there are other ways that people can heal themselves, for example, but no one's going to argue that they'll outdo a medic at this point. It, it, you know, I think that similarly, it's not like there's a, a version of the soldier or something that'll uh, be better than a scout is at what the scout does, for example. So. Uh, you know, it's that, that's definitely something we worry about and something we pay attention to, but, uh, yeah. However, recent treatment of matchmaking seems to contradict this. Class limits are uncapped and weapons which blur the lines of specialists are still untouched. And Valve has remained unclear on what exactly their vision of the game is. TF2 has gone through multiple iterations with different developers with different goals in mind. And now the current team wants to bring that into a competitive direction. But here's the problem. They're really... Really you remember in my learning curve video where I made a joke about it taking them six months and two skipped holidays to release more rebalances? Yeah, they didn't release more rebalances. It was just hats! One could argue that the last seven years of Smithsmith updates have had major rebalances or weapon additions, but you know, wh whatever. It was two months ago. No point in being bitter about it anymore. 
Back on topic, other unlocks create an environment where if one team uses it, the other team is forced to likewise run it because of the advantage it can give to a team. Darwin's Danger Shield allows you to tank a headshot, meaning if one team sniper runs it, the other one has to as well. One team running the Vita Saw will always come up with a higher uber percentage than the enemy medic would on death. This means both teams are forced to run it to avoid being at a passive disadvantage. So let's say that Valve is taking their time on this. When they do eventually reshape the meta, they're going to have to do a couple of things. For one, they need to introduce people to sixes with more than just matchmaking. Every legitimate esport has a casual version of their competitive mode. This doesn't mean stripping away TF2's existing casual, but it does mean adding a new mode where people can play sixes without ranked. They also need to center future balancing around 6s rather than 12v12, which it seems like they're already doing, but you know, it's Valve, so... The Spy is difficult because if a team is smart, it's really difficult to get a pick as him, much less 2 or 3. Any smart team will just be like, Wait, hold on here, there, there's 6 of us, but there's, there's a 7th. We don't have 2 demos. Oh, man. The easiest way to explain Spy's problems is through song. Anything Spy can do, Sniper does better. Sniper does everything better than Spy. No, he can't. Yes, he can. No, he can't. Yes, he can. No, he can't. Yes, he can. No, he can. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Anything Spy can do, Sniper kills faster. All without dying right after it, too. No, he can't. Yes, he can. No, he can't. Yes, he can. No, he can't. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. I can check for uber, you stupid youtuber. What? I couldn't hear you. I just killed your men. I'll decloak behind their back. Have they seen you before? Yeah. Well, good luck with that. Spy is just a very short-term pick that gets outclassed in a lot of ways by alternatives. He's a surprise plan at best and doesn't last long after teams adapt. Speaking of which, Sniper. He's a glass cannon that can get a lot done, but sacrifices the mobility of a scout or soldier, and usually leads to the other team countering him with another sniper. He's a great playmaker when things slow down, but can become inconsistent and less reliable when points are closely contested. Pyro is bullet sponge, he's not that great for attacking, he's pretty good on like last defenses for denying uber, but beyond that, his abilities are kind of limited. Heavy. I love you, you know I love you, Heavy, but you're balanced to be a great defender and a slow attacker. Trying to force run him full time without unlocks is a recipe for disaster when he can't roll out as fast as his team. The engineer suffers from a similar problem, where they're both essentially built to park the bus. And when you introduce unlocks into the mix, it just becomes an even more annoying system. When a heavy can roll out quickly, it becomes an enormous roadblock for the enemy team to overcome. In other words, the problem with specialists is they either bring the game to a stalemate, or they struggle to come in handy for more than a certain period of time. Now with all of that said, I have to interject for a moment. The system the community has decided on works. It's what people decided on after years of testing and adjusting, and by working with what they were given, people made a form of sixes that wasn't too slow, isn't too limited of options, and isn't too confusing or boring to spectate. In other words, the game in its current state is not balanced around sixes, and therefore compromises have to be made on what works and what doesn't, and all of this is why Valve's influence on the game is so intriguing to me. They have the ability to completely change the foundation of a class into something meta-shattering and game-changing. Is that likely to happen? Not really. But they can still adjust unlockable weapons in a way that complements the format. Now with all of that technical stuff out of the way, I can talk about the topic I was a lot more interested in. What kind of sixes does Valve want to foster? Is it going to be a glorified Prolander, or are they just going to have to cut their losses and support the scene regardless of meta? Well, before that, I want to clear up a couple of misconceptions that people seem to have about Sixes. For one, Sixes players don't hate the idea of other classes being allowed to play at all times. It's just that as long as all the problems I've talked about exist, it's going to be difficult for people to enjoy these classes being run so much. 5CP is also pretty flawed, but that's this whole other thing that I don't even want to go into detail on. The way I like to look at it is that Sixes players aren't close-minded to change. It's mostly just that Valve sucks. Another misconception is that balancing the game for competitive will somehow ruin the casual environment. What people don't seem to realize is balancing for sixes really doesn't impact pubs as much as you would think it does. If anything, you're playing a much safer system when you're balancing around competitive. Random crits suck. Unbalanced teams suck. When you're playing casual, most of the time, you're not even going to be fighting more than six people within your shooting range. So balance-wise, you're not even going to see that much of a difference. 
The only reason Casual would ever be affected negatively by the game being treated as an esport is because the developers choose to ignore the casual scene, which it seems like Valve doesn't have an intention of doing, but if it does happen, that's not Six's fault, that's a, that's a developer issue. During this next session, I want you to be completely honest and raise your hand every time I say something you felt personally. 1. Tried competitive matchmaking and had an overall unenjoyable or underwhelming experience. 2. Concerned that TF2 might lose its charm after long wait times in between concerningly unpolished major updates. 3. Love. These problems pretty much summarize my issue with the game right now. It's in this weird puberty-like metamorphosis where it's trying to advance the competitive scene, but it's also trying to retain the casual balancing that conflicts with the interests of sixes. I'm ready, I got a breath. By the way, before you get mad at me for thinking the game should more openly integrate competitive, just remember that Valve members themselves concluded that it was in their best interest to do so. The competitive players have on their own sort of created this other version of the game with different rules and they'll restrict things like classes and they'll ban most of the weapons. And so we'd like to fix that by finding some sort of a common ground between the communities. Although they're vague, Valve seems intent on finding a way to compromise between people who want more variety within class choices and the people who are happy with the system they've come to develop. My own opinions have changed throughout the years, and personally speaking, I think balancing as generalists and specialists is the best way to deal with the conundrum of how to compromise. Don't think of generalists as too strong, because they aren't. They're versatile. Specialists are strong in a different way, and balancing them around their roles rather than their ability to do everything is probably the best way to follow how the game was intended to be played. While a heavy isn't meant to be highly mobile and shut down all attacks, he is extremely strong in guarding areas of control and supporting his team with his presence. While the pyro isn't a highly mobile kill finisher, and isn't a highly effective flank guarder, and he isn't a highly effective support character, the pyro is... nothing. Fuck pyro. So maybe, just maybe, one day, we'll find a way to balance classes towards their strengths without sacrificing their only FUCKING WEAKNESS! And create a system where everybody's happy. But probably not. I'm sorry, Heavy, but I guess you're just... forever a specialist. Oh, yeah. P.S. Valve, please make a 10th class AoE healer with their own stalemate breaker. Cause I think that'd be pretty cool. Thanks. Any meme you can make, I can make better. I can make any meme better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. 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 My falsetto isn't very good.